In the ESPN newsroom, Minnesota Vikings Pro Bowl tackle Corey Stringer is dead a day after he collapsed at training camp, two days after he was taken off the practice field on a cart. The Vikings said the 27-year-old Stringer showed signs of heat stroke after the practice session yesterday and he was rushed to the hospital. He was unconscious there and had a body temperature of over 108 degrees. His organs failed throughout the day until his heart failed early this morning. Earlier today, the Vikings talked about the loss. I don't even know how and when I'm going to get over this because it's hard. There's a lot of people here in America. <laughs> that's, that's, that's feeling our pain throughout the world. And we know Corey Stringer, number 77, is going to be missed. Running through the tunnel on game day, having his number called. After the game, seeing his wife and son in the lounge. <laughs> There's nothing you go through in life that prepares you for, for something like this. It's extremely unfortunate. It's far greater than any football. The 335-pound stringer had struggled with weight problems early in his career before he had a breakout Pro Bowl year last season. He was the Vikings' first-round pick in 95 from Ohio State. He had started every game at right tackle the last two seasons. Now, because of Stringer's death, the Vikings canceled today's practices. Corey Stringer dead at the age of 27. The only other known NFL training camp fatality came in 1979. St. Louis tight end J.V. Kane died of a heart attack. He was 28 years old. Corey Stringer was 27 years old. He's survived by wife Kelsey and three-year-old son, Cody Drew. Warning signs are tough to spot. It's an activity that can be deadly, as we found out Wednesday. Professional football player Corey Stringer died of heat stroke following a grueling practice in temperatures in the 90s in Minnesota. Experts say it's sometimes tough to spot heat illness. Warning signs are often confused with physical and mental tiredness, which sometimes means players don't stop. Welcome to CNN Sports Illustrated. I'm Mark Fine. We're going to get to baseball and basketball in a moment, but... It's a day when the fun of sports has been put on hold because of the passing of a young NFL player. Vikings offensive tackle Corey Stringer died this morning due to complications from heat stroke. He had developed symptoms following Tuesday morning's practice and was taken to Emanuel St. Joseph's Hospital. By the time he got there, he was unresponsive and had a temperature of 108 degrees. Stringer developed multi-organ system failure over the course of the day, and early this morning, his heart failed. Stringer made the Pro Bowl for the first time in his career last season. While he was an outstanding tackle, he had always had trouble at training camp. On Monday, Stringer couldn't make it through practice, had to be taken off the field in a golf cart. He promised teammates he would do better on Tuesday. Today, some of those teammates reacted to the passing of their friend. We know Corey Stringer, number 77, is going to be missed. Running through the tunnel on game day, having his number called. But that wasn't the case here. We have lost a brother, a teammate, and a friend. It's been very tough on our football team. The reason we're here is to let the public know how much we love and care about Corey Stringer and what he's meant to us. I know everyone's going to talk about the heat. Um, it's hot everywhere. That's why they call it the dog days of summer. You have to realize, too, that everything in life, there is no explanation for. I've never seen him mad. I've never seen him argue with a player. By no means. And I think if he's looking down on us right now, he sees all the pain that we feel. But at the same time, he knows the show must go on. Stringer was not only a good player, but by all counts, an outstanding citizen. He became a fan favorite in Minnesota. One man at practice yesterday said he had driven from Iowa just to get Stringer's autograph. Stringer lived in a Minnesota or lived in Minnesota year-round, worked with local schools and public libraries and community service programs. Players throughout the league responding today to his passing. I could probably say he was my best friend up there, and uh, the thing about him is that 
Uh, there's probably about 30 other guys that can make the same statement. He's, uh, he was probably the best locker room guy up there, and uh, he's going to be missed. Corey was a great guy. More than uh, uh, the teammate aspect of it, the football aspect of it, he's a great person. He had a great family. He treated my family very nice. And uh, I'm sorry, it was a, it was a tragic, tragic uh, incident. He was my roommate in the combine. He was also a good friend. And uh, it was just a tragic incident. Oh, Corey's on my mind right now, him and his family. Um, I probably talked to you know five or six of my former teammates at 7 o'clock this morning. Um, I, I think everyone back there, you know, all the Ohio State guys that played with him and all the guys that knew him are very sad, you know, because he is a great guy. Yeah, they did. Sports Illustrated's Peter King has spent a great deal of time with just about every team in the NFL, and he says this loss is going to be even more difficult because it was the Vikings. Of all the locker rooms I go to, there's not a team that's any closer than the Vikings are. And so I think that there's got to be a lot of grief inside that locker room from players. Maybe they weren't that close to Corey Stringer, but Green builds this great inner team chemistry, and that's what has to hurt them today. Shape of his career, but did his weight play a big role in his death, and how unusual is this? Members of the medical community trying to answer many of these questions today. This is what we see in athletes uh, who exercise vigorously, generate a great amount of body heat in the muscles. And when this happens at times of high temperature and high humidity, they're unable to release that heat to the environment. The heat builds up in the body and causes serious problems. In, in retrospect, I think there are always warning signs that one can go back and see. However, any athlete who's exercising vigorously in high heat and humidity conditions in the summertime, they're going to exhibit symptoms. The question is whether one can identify an athlete who is going to go on to develop more serious problems.